have to be willing to get your waders dirty when you're restoring habitat. And on this day, nearly 100 project staff and volunteers are knee and neck deep in an artificial ditch in north central Oregon, looking for fish and other creatures to relocate. Basically, we're shocking the water Open. to get the either lamprey or the fish to move so we can see them. Open and the then lamprey. we're netting them and putting them into buckets and they're released into the real channel. Sculpin. This is the second phase of a project that's enhancing habitat for spring chinook salmon, steelhead, bull trout, and other species in the Middle Fork John Day River. This phase includes filling in the 3,400 foot ditch that has disrupted flow since gold miners dredged the area in the 1940s. The North Channel was robbing the South Channel of a lot of its critical flow in the summertime. When water's really shallow and slow, it warms up faster, and salmon don't like that. So we've got a much better system now that we've removed this North Channel. And then Granite Boulder is coming down, and it's hitting South Channel too, and that's bringing all this cold water, really good cold water. And so we know there's going to be a lot of fish use from now on below Granite Boulder Creek. There's a sculpin. Open, big one. Three lamprey. More than 8,000 fish were moved out of the man-made North Channel and into both the main channel and Granite Boulder Creek, which the project recently restored to its historic route. Yeah, I'm Amacy, baby lamprey. Probably four years old. The relocated residents included over 4,000 lamprey, 1,700 Chinook juveniles, 540 steelhead juveniles, a few spotted frogs, two bull trout, and 20 adult Chinook. Pretty, all right. Those adult Chinook, they come 500 miles away from the ocean. We got to make sure we handle them as carefully as can be so the spawning will happen and we have that genetic stock. The Middle Fork of the John Day is home to some of the best spawning grounds for spring Chinook in the entire Columbia River Basin. Even more importantly, as Jim Ruzicki tells us, it's one of the last wild runs in Oregon. We don't alter the genetics or the behavior of the fish by stocking non-endemic fish in the system. So it's a wild fish system, and that's pretty unique you know, to have an entire sub-basin like this tributary to the Columbia managed entirely for wild fish. Spring Chinook salmon spawning in the Oxbow have been well below the historical averages for the last decade. Although surveys conducted by Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife in 2011 showed a nearly 300% increase of reds in the Oxbow from the previous year. Soon, the project will seed and plant thousands of trees and native plants and add an irrigation system. Then, in 2014, the project's third phase will restore another 7,000 feet of river channel that was altered by dredging. And although there's still much to be done, the vision for the Oxbow is clear. It's going to be a happy place for fish. We call it Fish Disneyland. We got all these tributaries coming in. We got all this wonderful river, you know, meandering through well-connected floodplains. Fish Disneyland, it's gonna be an amazing place when it's done.